I want you to imagine something. A seed that will grow into a life form that will have the potential to pretty much achieve almost anything and an unlimited amount of things. Some things will require cultivation in combination with innate things or innate ability to achieve them. With time, the seed sprouts and experiences the world for the first time. It's lively, energetic, and just ready to take the world on. But it's weak and needs to be nurtured in order to learn how to conduct itself in the world, especially if it ever hopes to survive in it, let alone thrive and realize all of its gifts. Eventually, with the nurturing and the resources that it receives, it is able to live independently and choose how it wants to proceed, based on its own self-concept or what it believes it should do. The thing about this period is that it's only one of many sagas of its life. From that very basic and simple analogy of life, you're probably thinking, where is he gonna go with it? What was the point of that? Yeah, it was pretty dull from our point of view. But what happens when I give the life form a name, a specific personality, goals, and relationship? By metaphorically adding color to this character, it becomes a hundred times more appealing and exciting. Why is this? Because we can relate more to this character and feel like we can get to know them better. It's almost as though the more we know someone, the more we can empathize with them. And as a result, the closer we relate with them. And ultimately, care about them. It's simply human nature to care about others. It's how we survived for so long. We didn't get this far being the strongest or the fastest animal. No, we got here with our ability to cooperate and to survive and work towards something greater than ourselves. Those of our ancestors that tried to be lone wolves ended up being wiped out by the bitter force of nature. This in turn resulted in us naturally being closer to people we knew better. But what about from their perspective, the person we are trying to get to know? How do they perceive the world compared to our own conception of such? And, well, it's pretty boundless and hard to describe with words alone. How does the conscious self reliably convey itself when it's limited by so many communication limitations, language just being one of many. I believe that's one of the reasons that art appeals to us, not only on a psychological and intellectual level, but on a subconscious spiritual one too. It's the connection that we can't understand, but can undeniably feel. Now that we've established that, what sorts of things does a person experience? How are they categorized from the lens of their own self-concept? People have many different ways of living their life. And thanks to Carl Jung, we have a few archetypes that can explain some of the roles that we play in life and our character arc across them. According to the psychologist Jung, an archetype is a mode of thinking, which was formed from the collective unconscious of the human psyche. To put it more plain and simply, due to the roles that we have played across time, there have been examples of the hero, lover, explorer, ruler, and caregiver, just to name a few, across all time periods and cultures. People act in accordance to these roles, regardless of how cultures are different and how times have changed. Each archetype also has its shadow variant. The shadow is the darker part of themselves, which exists subconsciously. Only by being aware of the shadow and having it under control can it be managed? If not, we run the risk of it taking us over. Actually, one of the reasons why fiction is so popular and so resonant with a lot of people is because of archetypes. Take anime, for instance. The characters, the plot, and universe, for the most part, are a far cry from reality. Then why is it that a large number of people, including myself, find these characters to be relatable? It's plausible that we share underlying motivations with them, which help us play our role the best that we can. The role that we have been given is dependent on a range of factors, which fall under the broad categories of genetics and environment. Now that this has been established, what is a fantastic way to depict a character's, a character's journey? Specifically, the stage that they're in, in the eyes of the creator, in the lens of the creator. Essentially, the author is the god of the characters that they create, which makes it that much clearer to define where a character is mentally at any given time. And of course, what I'm talking about is anime opening, and specifically how the design, themes, and presentation of them depict the subjective nature of life in an appealing yet touching way. Anime openings have pretty much been around since the beginning of the medium itself. An anime opening is pretty much a short music video, about 90 seconds, about one and a half minutes, which acts as a mini trailer for the season ahead. It typically depicts the protagonist with a wide array of emotions and paints a picture of the goal that the character has, as well as some potential threats and struggles along the way. But it's not just MC we get a glimpse of. It's also the other character arcs within the universe that the show takes place in. All in all, it paints an excellent picture of what is to come in an endearing, 
stylish yet captivating way. For everyone, life is a journey. A journey which is defined by our parameters and expectations. Everything around us is filtered by our perception, creating our own unique view on the world. It's probably one of the reasons why no two people are the same. In the case of anime openings, they do this perfectly by orchestrating visuals and sound to convey feeling and perspective. The first opening of Blue Exorcist serves as a portrait of everyday life and internal struggles via its theme. The music is fast and light-hearted when Rin is rushing to get to school on time because he missed his alarm. We can feel his urgency, the way he rushingly jogs on the spot. The melody seamlessly transitions into something smoother and contemplative. As Rin encounters Hellspawn, his much slower, calmer, and even melancholic expression suggests a shift in priorities, and we can see he is now very much in his thoughts. As the background silhouettes appear, tall and anonymous, we can sense loneliness. A loneliness he must feel as a burden of his power and responsibility. Immediately after, we are treated with this beautiful shot of Rin lying down, unarmed and opened up. He is vulnerable and in complete isolation. The track is now as slow as it's ever been. As Rin lies there, after struggling to get back up, his brother offers a hand to support him. As Rin then moves forward, gradually walking, then running at full speed. A compilation of Rin's allies follows with an awesome shot of him unsheathing his blade, thus revealing his true power. From this very short clip, we are giving context onto who these characters are. We can extract some meaning and see Rin's perspective, and see how Rin's perspective is captured. It teaches us that even though on the outside we can seem very happy and full of life, we can still have doubts and things that are bothering us. But only through sharing our pain and vulnerabilities can we work through them. I know a lot of high schoolers can relate to this on some level. I mean, I knew I could back in the day, and I still do. If we take the philosophy that we are the main characters of our lives and apply that to anime openings, we can gain a lot from them. It does require a certain amount of ego, but not so much that I believe to be excessive or damaging. Bunching off this but hitting a certain beat harder is Diver, Naruto Shippuden opening 8. I explained this a lot in depth, no pun intended, in a previous video, but long story short, this opening perfectly captures depression and self-doubt. As Naruto falls through the sea, his detractors surround him and he finds himself faced with his ultimate failure, that being Sasuke at the seafloor. Only through the push and support of his friends does Naruto literally and metaphorically emerge from the depths with the strength to re-enter. This opening shows us how our negative thoughts can consume us if we remain in isolation. I think we've all had our sagas in our lives where we've succumbed to our insecurities and we try to fight everything alone. It's an inevitable part of our lives and through this opening, we experience the catharsis of watching our inner feelings manifest. It's a huge part of life and a great reminder that things will work out if we put our trust in others. Unfortunately though, the vast spectrum of life does include more sinister and darker things, like corruption and addiction. I believe that both openings of Death Note encapsulate these ideas, specifically bad habits and the consequences of following along that path. In the first opening, Light's risk is conveyed to him by walking on a narrow plank high above everyone else. Although Light is isolated and alone, he still has that superior feeling of power, one he received from the Death Note. He is portrayed as omniscient, godlike figure who can't be stopped. From this opening, we can deduce that Death Note gave Light a literal high, one which made him feel invincible. This seems very akin to substances, especially uppers, which exaggerate the feelings of ego and self-importance. It's not only limited to things like that, but anything that leads to an inflation of self or exaggerated self-efficacy, like status or wealth. However, the beauty of Death Note's second opening serves as a juxtaposition to the first, and it provides the darker half an addiction or ego trip below. Everything in the second opening, from the heavy metal screamer music to the fast-moving flashing imagery, convey the feeling of insanity. Things in this opening are out of control, a stark contrast with the very clear and concise first opening. My favorite shot is right here. The camera is pointed at light from a low angle. This serves to make light look and appear bigger and more powerful, like the last opening where he is high over the sky. However, the difference here is that the low angle conveys a false sense of power. The low angle gives the viewers the illusion of stature due to the camera manipulation, when in truth, he isn't very high up at all. This accompanied with the characters hidden around him creates this uneasy paranoia. Light is no longer presented as a god. Instead, he's out in the open and vulnerable. The opening ends with screaming vocals and shows quick imagery with Light's face literally breaking apart, a foreshadowing of his downfall. This shows the lows of the intense power trip. It's lonely, illusory, and just pure madness. Both Death Note openings are two sides of the same coin. Highs and lows that we can experience of engaging with things that can inflate our ego, a cautionary tale, and very real facet of life. 
It's not all doom and gloom though. In fact, most of the time it's the complete opposite. You see, a huge theme of these shows, especially long running ones, is legacy. By this I mean how our characters have been shown to grow up and change across the story, and how all the past experiences, painful and pleasurable, have led up to them, and to this point. Notice how I didn't call them good or bad. I didn't label them based on some measure of right and wrong, because in truth, both happen to everyone, and most of which are far beyond the scope of our control. As a result, I believe it's more useful to base our parameters of good and bad on what we can control. Case in point, how we reacted to something that happened to us at any given moment. By doing this, we can frame our lives as journeys with us as the main characters, by cherishing and appreciating good emotions and good occasions, while meditating and growing on the more challenging painful ones. Anime openings usually always frame things in this way. For me, I knew that moving to Korea alone would have an unpredictable amount of mental hurdles, and physical ones too. It was a huge step out of my comfort zone. But the idea of me not making the most of my life was a bit more unsettling. Not carving a story out for myself like my fiction ideals did. At face value, it seems like a childish reason, but I'd rather live out the philosophy of an idealistic child than a defeated adult. Right now, there's no better opening that captures this for me than Naruto Shippuden opening 18. This opening is beautiful, and the crystal, I believe, is supposed to represent peace. In the real world, I would interpret it as the same thing but I guess people would call it happiness. It's what everyone wants. Human beings are of course complex, but are also shockingly simple. My takeaway from this opening is that all the characters reaching out for the crystal are my personal loved ones, with all the experiences I had with them along the way serving as my step closer to holding it. Naruto is alone in this opening, as I am right now. The only thing getting me through my challenges right now are all the people that got me here. Now, like Naruto does here, I want to hold the crystal by throwing myself into the unknown to find it and hope that I bring it back home one day. I know that others can draw parallels too, as they carve out their own stories. On the topic of new beginnings and journeys, this is another grand part of life, which is given an extra vibrance through anime opening. To name a few, the original Dragon Ball opening, the opening of Hunter x Hunter, Jojo Part 4 opening 1, Hitman Reborn opening 1, but my favourite of all time, symbolization of adventure and new journeys, is Yu Yu Hakusho. The lyrics preach about the importance of connections when you are traveling alone. It talks about how closing yourself off from others is painful. So you should open up yourself to others when and then your truth will come out. Your power and confidence will start swelling up, magically erupt, all because of kindness from a stranger you don't even know. The love you accept and offer to others is what gets you through it, is what gets you through the loneliness of a new location. Something I can resonate with heavily. And that's just the lyrics. I mean, the opening shows Yusuke and his group of friends showing off their abilities against a bunch of cruel demons, ending with a heartwarming image of him together with his loved ones. Yusuke and his allies were brought together through circumstance, but ended up forging loving bonds with one another by the end of the series. Whether we choose to or not, we might end up being in a new place for the first time. If not that, we will certainly have to face loneliness. This opening captures that, but more importantly, the approach that we should have when faced with a difficult situation like that. I'm gonna end this section with my most popular use of anime openings, and just generally how it captures the day to day. I love the gym, and generally working out. To me, it's evidence of daily improvement, and a tangible application of pushing forward, and breaking through limits and growth. For many people too, it's a very crucial aspect of their lives. Considering the fact that majority of anime have some kind of fighting, there are always some arcs of training when the characters undergo a phase of growth. It's usually where the characters struggle through hard times, physical and mental. It's particularly apparent in shonen anime. A portion of these animes contain forms, states that the characters have achieved through relentless training and adversity. These never fail to pump me up and make me believe as though I could accomplish the same feats as them. Because in truth, I too try my best and keep pushing myself to do better. These openings capture that aspect of life and make the dull and monotonous seem exciting and purposeful. It's as Jordan Peterson says, to have a happy life, you need to get the activities that repeat, the small ones, right, since they make up a huge chunk of the life. These openings let us live vicariously through them and provide a perspective to see our own lives through, one positive and full of life. From the days of watching Naruto on TV as a child to discovering my favorites, anime openings have always captivated my spirit in some way and give me a means to encapsulate different arcs of my life. When I was 16 year years old, I started boxing for the first time and training for my boxing exhibition. During that time, I watched a, a lot of Hajime no Ippo and the opening of Ippo quietly training motivated me to do so too. At that time, Ippo was me and I was Ippo. When I started high school for the first time, fighting dreamers Naruto opening was my main jam. 
I was surrounded by new people with a lot to prove. I was really influenced by my uncles and teachers the way that Naruto and the characters of his age were. It was a really formative time and probably one of the reasons why I'm so emotionally attached to the series of Naruto in general. Obviously, I don't shut up, shut up about it in pretty much most of my videos, so... I mean, look at this, seriously. Still... In life, you're the main character of your story. You, you can choose to take control of your life by being intentional and aware of your surroundings. Or let life take you by um, on autopilot. During this life, we go through character arcs and struggles that lead us to be better and stronger people. This means seeing all sources of pain as opportunities for growth rather than a doomed fate of existence. In this video, I only scratched the surface of what anime openings mean to me because they really do mean a lot on how they capture life. I hope that this video has helped you see things in a new way and with a new lens and provide you with hope when things may seem uncertain for you and just pretty bleak. They've been with me through a lot and I hope that they are the same for you too. I've been Sir Lance and have a great day. Under